on. All right, good morning. We today are working on unit three, day 13, and we use this lesson with Zern module five, lesson 18. Your I can for today is I can add and subtract two or more fractions. So let's get started. We can start with the problem one third plus two thirds plus two thirds. Now when we're doing this, the first thing I notice is that they are all in the same unit. They, they are all thirds. Every denominator is already a three. So that means that I am good to add. If they were not the same unit, whoops, then I would not be okay to add. I always have to add with the denominators being the same. So they are all thirds, you're good to add. So there's a couple ways that you could go about this. I can add them in order. So I know one third plus two thirds is three thirds. Okay, and then I can do three thirds plus my two thirds that I have left over over here. And that equals five thirds. Now, I wanna write this answer in as a mixed number. So right now, I have a fraction where my numerator is bigger than my denominator. So that means that I have a fraction that is greater than one. Okay, so I wanna change that into a mixed number. So I can use a number bond to help me out with that. So five thirds, I wanna write that as a mixed number. I know how many thirds are in a whole. Well, that would be three, so three thirds plus two thirds is the same as five thirds because three thirds is the whole and then two thirds. So my answer would be one because three thirds is the same as one whole and two thirds. So my answer to this problem, let me scroll back up. One third plus two thirds plus two thirds equals one and two thirds. All right check out the next one. In this next problem, we are actually going to start with subtraction. Okay, so one way that will be talked about today in the, is how to use a tape diagram to subtract. So when you're doing the tape diagram to subtract, all I'm really doing is drawing a rectangle. And I'm going to say that this whole rectangle is worth my starting amount. So I'm starting with one and five eighths. Okay, so the whole thing is worth one and five eighths. I know I'm taking away three eighths, and I know I'm taking away four eighths. I need to figure out what is left over. Okay, so what I can start with, if I have one and five eighths, okay, I could figure out how much three eighths and four eighths is all together. So I know I'm losing this whole chunk of the bar. So that would mean that I'm adding those. Three eighths plus four eighths equals seven eighths. So I'm gonna kind of write that in a different color on top of the, this whole thing. So this whole bar is seven eighths. Again, to the same spot. So all the way from here to there, 3 eighths plus 4 eighths is the same as 7 eighths. I'm getting rid of 7 eighths of my 1 and 5 eighths. So I need to subtract 1 and 5 eighths minus 7 eighths. Now notice, this is, I can't do 5 minus 7. I need to change this 1 and 5 eighths into an improper fraction. So I'm going to think about this. 1 and 5 eighths, how many? holes or how many eighths are in one hole? Well, I know that one hole equals eight eighths. I then have to add this five eighths. So eight eighths plus five eighths. Eight plus five is 13. So 13 eighths. One and five eighths is equivalent. It's another name for 13 eighths. Now it makes it a lot easier to subtract my 7 eighths. So here we go. 13 eighths minus 7 eighths. I know 13 minus 7 
is 6 eighths. My unit stays the same. So my answer, this little piece, is worth 6 eighths. I can check my work by adding these all together. 6 eighths plus 4 eighths plus 3 eighths. 6 eighths plus 4 eighths, I know it's 10 eighths. Plus 3 more is 13 eighths. And that is what I said that 1 and 5 eighths was equivalent to, is 13 eighths. Okay? One more way that I could look at that is 13 eighths. If I used my number bond like we've done previously, because really this last time we just did it backwards. 13 eighths, and I know one whole would be 8 eighths. And I know 8 plus 5, so 5 eighths, equals 13. So 13 eighths is the same as 1 and 5 eighths. So I know that that works. So my answer, let's go back here, 1 and 5 eighths minus this 3 eighths minus this 4 eighths leaves us with 6 eighths left over. Let's try one more quick problem. Let's do 1 and 2 fifths minus 3 fifths. We'll subtract one number this time. So again, if I drew my tape diagram, I know the whole is worth 1 and 2 fifths. I'm taking away a 3 fifth size piece. I don't know what I have left. Okay, so my first step is to change 1 and 2 fifths into an improper fraction. Okay, so I'm going to say 1 and 2 fifths. Well, I know that there are 5 fifths in this one whole. So I'm going to rewrite this one whole as 5 fifths. Okay, and I'm keeping the 2 fifths. I'm going to add it together. So 5 fifths plus 2 fifths equals 7 fifths. That's the same as this whole. I could also write this whole as 7 fifths. So now it will be really easy to subtract. I'm like rewriting this whole problem. Instead of saying 1 and 2 fifths, I'm saying 7 fifths minus 3 fifths equals, okay, 7 minus 3 is 4. I keep my unit the same, 4 fifths. I'll put 4 fifths over here. I could check my work. I know 3 fifths plus 4 fifths equals 7 fifths. And if I put 7 fifths in a number bond, I know that one whole is 5 fifths plus 2 fifths more would equal 7 fifths. So the whole number would be 1 and 2 fifths. That checks out. So 1 and 2 fifths minus 3 fifths equals 4 fifths. All right, guys, have a great rest of your day. See you later.